You don't need to know everything about IT to start a career in this field. If you have ever wondered what the actual IT fundamentals are that you need to know to be effective on day number one in your IT career, then you've come to the right place. Today, we're covering hardware fundamentals from a real world perspective. What this means is you don't actually need to know the finer details of computer hardware, like RAM speeds or power supply capacities and CPU speeds to be effective in an IT role. Instead, we're going to focus on some of the most important hardware components that you should just have a general understanding exist and where you can find more information about them to be effective in your role. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you an example using this old computer here, but it's important to remember that there are many different types of computers out there. They come in all different colors, shapes, sizes, etc., but they all contain some of the very same core components. However, starting off with the motherboard here, this is a piece of hardware that helps all of the other components that are connected work properly together. So many of the components that we're gonna talk about within this video connect to the motherboard here. From a troubleshooting perspective, however, you'll most often see damage from like blown capacitors. These are these little things here and all around the computer. If you have a blown capacitor, this will look bulged out and look like it's going to explode. Next up is the power supply. These come in different shapes, sizes, and even different levels of power, like the wattage there, right? The size of your power supply is most often determined by the amount and different types of components you have in your computer. Some components require more power, so you might have to get a beefier, bigger power supply. And you don't necessarily need to know that right away, but you just basically have to have this understanding of, hey, if there's a lot of components in here or powerful components like video cards and things, might need a more powerful power supply. But really, unless you're building a custom computer, this won't matter much to you. However, if you're just troubleshooting a computer that won't turn on, a quick way that you can determine if a power supply is bad is doing the sniff test. Yep, you just put your nose right up next to it, and if it smells like burning metal and just kind of weird, your power supply is probably bad. And all the information that you need to know about that power supply is right there on the power supply. Next up after that is the hard drive. And hard drives are connected to both the motherboard and the power supply. And they also come in different shapes and sizes and capacities. And they are also known to go bad as well. And if you have a regular hard drive in your computer, like these big ones here that we're showing you, these have spinning components in them meaning there are parts in there that actually move. So oftentimes you can tell if a hard drive, a regular hard drive is bad, is if you hear them spinning really loud or even grinding. And if you're very careful, you can actually put your hand inside of the computer while the computer is running and make sure you're grounded and all that fun stuff because, you know, don't want to get hurt or, you know, the computer to get hurt either. But you can put your finger on that hard drive to see if that it is spinning or not. Like you'll actually feel though, like the spinning discs inside of there. And if you don't feel anything, probably not working, could be a good indication that you need to get a different hard drive. Another addition that I wanna to add to hard drives here because they are becoming more and more frequent in the different builds. And I can't show you from our specific build with this hardware that we have because on our motherboard, we don't have a slot for NVMe M.2 drives. So as you can see here, we have our regular hard drives, which have the spinning platters in them. We have our solid state drives, which don't have any moving parts in them. And now we have these NVMe or M.2 drives. These actually plug right into the motherboard and they act just like solid state drives. After the hard drive comes the RAM, the random access memory. Sometimes these RAM sticks can go bad. And a great way to troubleshoot RAM is by removing RAM sticks one by one. If you have multiple RAM sticks in there, obviously, you can remove them one by one, reboot the computer a couple different times and see if you still have some of those issues that could be related to your troubleshooting process here. But you can also just do a complete reboot place of that RAM to see if it might fix some of those issues in your troubleshooting process as well. But again, everything that you need to know to replace the RAM is located on the RAM sticks, as you can see. After that comes the CPU or the processor. All processors have some type of fan or cooling system attached to them. And most often you're gonna find that those cooling units will go bad and you'll need to replace them. Right underneath these cooling units is the processor itself. And I'll tell you, just be careful not to touch the top of these with any screwdrivers or anything like that because they are very sensitive, but you can replace processors as well if you've come to the determination that that's what's causing issues. And again, 
And everything you need to know is located right there on the processor itself. The next on the list here, what we can show you is this video card. And this is kind of an additional component added to this computer. Most desktop computers have onboard video and that onboard video is attached right to the motherboard itself. There could be other components attached to your motherboard because your motherboard has these things called PCI slots and things like video cards and other accessories will plug into these PCI slots. When troubleshooting other issues, there just might be cases where it's one of these additional components and you'll need to remove, replace those to continue during your uh, troubleshooting process. The last thing that I wanna highlight here is the ethernet port. If a computer is experiencing any types of internet issues and everything else is working fine or other computers on the network are working fine, take a look at this ethernet port. When you have a cable plugged in and it's blinking, that's often a great sign. If you have a cable plugged in and you don't see any lights, that could be a sign of it being bad. This ethernet port is attached to the motherboard. So if that ethernet port is bad, you would need to replace the entire motherboard to fix that issue or know how to solder in a new one, but that gets super complicated and you don't really need to know how to do that. I promise you, I don't, you don't really you don't because you could just buy an ethernet card that plugs directly into one of these pci slots like your video card did so there's that option as well as an it professional you are going to utilize google to search for the specific issues or components as they relate to these different or specific computer builds you know whether that's like a custom computer build and you're researching the specific ram power supplies motherboards that are in that build or you buy something from HP, Dell, Lenovo, et cetera, right? They are all going to have these core components that we talked about. And those are often the most replaced components and troubleshooting issues that you would find from a hardware perspective. Now there are going to be more issues, right? And maybe even more common issues that you could come across, but this is all information that you'll learn over time. And this is all information that you'll learn specifically from Google and again, over time. Other things that you can do outside of Google to be effective in day one from a practical standpoint, ask your peers questions, take really good notes, ask your peers questions and take really good notes. I promise you that is going to help you be very effective outside of what we've covered today. You aren't expected to know how to do all of these things right away or expected to know some of the finer details on some of these components, but you are expected to know how to find that information. And Google, YouTube, ChatGPT, these are all going to be your best friend when you're getting started. But I'm simply encouraging you to get started in this field with practical information that will help you be effective on day one in a position. Depending on your IT career trajectory, much of the finer details and information like the hard drive speeds, the CPU speeds, the you know power supply capacities, that's all learned over time. And sometimes that means many years and that's okay. Sometimes you just really don't need to go that granular at the end of the day. And so I made this video because I don't want people to think that they need to know or even remember those finer details to be an IT professional, because you don't. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So anyway, as always, take it easy.